Um, and one of the things that, that New South was saying, or the leadership was saying, was that, look, you must discourage people from joining the ANC, because what was happening was at that stage, the, um, the main forward area was Botswana. And the ANC in Botswana were, they were cavalier in their approach. There was a guy called um, Mario Squirn and a guy called Patrick Fitzgerald. And they would recruit everyone, left, right and center. They had some phenomenal successes. I mean, they got, they recruited Derek Hanakom, um, and uh, he was a farmer. And um, he then became the, the handler of a guy who infiltrated the army and gave them, the NC, big, big information which uh, related to Renamo, the South Africa support for Renamo, which they were then able to pass on to the Mozambican government and was very useful for the ANC and its relations to all sorts of people. I mean, that was like a, they did some, so that was a, a big success, but they recruited a lot of people who were spies and a lot of people who were incompetent duds. And so there was some, I mean, there was good reason why they were saying, um, but the ANC didn't like that. You know, that, that who's NUSAS to be telling people whether they should join the ANC? That's for the ANC to decide and for the individuals concerned to decide. So it was another issue of, of conflict. Then what happened was, what years are we talking about? We're talking now, now, now we're reaching 1980. Okay. So, um, in 1980, um, there's the Zimbabwe election, and um, uh, I was part of a, a group, we, we put together a university project, um, and um, I think there were about seven or eight of us. We went up in a combi and part as a research project, um, which was funded by the university, to go and investigate Zimbabwe. And, and we, we, did, we, we, we played it by the book. We did, we did this publication, and we did it properly and professionally, well, professionally, but, but we, we did our proper research in the way that we'd said. But what happened was, during that visit, I, I had worked in, at the end of 1979, I had to, my, because my parents were in the church, they had no money, so, so I had to pay my own way through university, and I did that through getting bursaries, but also through having jobs. So I used to work selling marble coating and things like that, doing telephone marketing. And then in, in the holidays, then I would work full time to be able to, to, to pay the fees and so on. So at um, end of 79, I worked um, for Boswell Wilkie Circus um, and I, in Johannesburg. I got a job um, and uh, it was actually Derek Hanacom who got me, got me the job because he had some connection there. And, and uh, um, we worked controlling the parking. Uh, uh, me and a friend called Robbie Bars. Anyway, so, so we, we then had, happened to stay in a house with a guy called Pete Roussos. Um, and, uh, and then Pete Roussos went into to exile in Zimbabwe in, in 19, end of 79. And he, well, he was probably already part of the ANC, I guess, but he was, became an ANC, a key ANC person there. So when we came over, um, they, he was very helpful in setting us up meeting with different people, actually mainly his connections, because the ANC's connections with ZAPU, not ZANU. ZANU, immediately we got there, they put the intelligence people onto us. So one seminar we, we had, then the, the ZANU intelligence people arrived. It was quite bizarre, because um, there was a real tension between the ANC and, uh, at that stage and, uh, um, and ZANU, because of their connection with ZAPU. Um, anyway, Pete was very helpful to us, and he said, look, can I see you um, alone? And I thought, this was, I told everyone, this is what it's about, is, is this whole thing of people being told not to have connections with people in Zimbabwe, and he'd, he'd heard about this, but in fact, what he wanted was just to recruit me to the NC. Now, he didn't know the others on the trip, so he, wouldn't get, wasn't, he was much more cautious, he wasn't playing it like the Botswana people. Um, and so I, he, you know, was, I was then recruited into the ANC and asked me if I wanted, was prepared to, and I said yes. 